أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسم صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را كتاب وحكمت آياته ثم فصلت من لدن حكيم خبير اللہ تعبد اللہ انی لکم منہ نذیر و بشیر صدق اللہ العظیم سبحان و تعالی اسٹڈی آف سورت احود علیہ السلاۃ وسلام سورت یونس اینڈ سورت احود علیہ مسلاۃ وسلام آر اے پیئر دے ہیو دی سیم ریلیشن شپ بٹوین دیم which we found in Surah Al-Anam and Surah Al-Araf. There we found only Hazrat Ibrahim mentioned in Surah Al-Anam. None of the, those messengers to whose, to, whom, to whose nations the punishment of Allah came. And Surah Al-Araf, nearly half of it, that was occupied by Ambao Rusul. The history of those nations to whom the messengers of Allah were sent, and they rejected them and they were destroyed and here we find you know that although it's not so clear cut you know polarization or differentiation but a reciprocal ratio exists in surah yunus only two after uh, of 11 sections they were occupied by ambaw rusul the history of the messengers here in surah hud we'll find more than half of the surah again just like surah al-araf It deals with the, the history of those nations and people and the messengers which sent to them. Both these surahs are starting Alif Lam Ra. And I just, you know, uh, I didn't remember to invite your attention to this fact. The Alif Lam Ra is not counted as a full ayah. While Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Al Imran, though both of them began with Alif Lam Neem, And in both of them, Alif Lam Neem, it is one ayah, counted as one ayah. Alif Lam Ra, not counted as one ayah. Ha Neem, although there are two letters, they are counted as one ayah. All these things are based on, as the Prophet told us, not any rule of grammar, nor any rule of linguistics, not any rule of naf, nothing of this sort. And it is called in the terminology of tafsir, Tawqifi, all these things are maqoof on how the Prophet has told us. No reasoning, no inference, no logic, no grammar, nothing of the sort. Alif la amra kitabun nukhkimat ayatuhu summa fussilat min ladun hakim in khabir. Let me tell you another thing before we start the text. There is a saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Shayyabatni hudun wa akhawatuha. You know, when this surah was revealed, it appeared as if the Prophet is so much grieved, is under such a pressure, a mental pressure, a tension, that he appeared to be old. You know, gray hair appeared in his hair. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked him a question. What is to you? You have, you have, grown, sudden, you have grown suddenly old. The reply was, Shayyabatni hudun wa akhawatuha. These surahs, Hud and its sisters, who have the same style and same, you know, essence. So I have grown old because of them. Why? Because in these surahs it appears that the ajal or the time limit of Quraysh is coming to an end. And now the punishment and the chastisement is going to come down very soon. So that was the grief to Prophet ﷺ because after all, 
This nation was his own nation. He also was from among them. He was also from Quraysh, although they were, didn't believe in him, but they were their kith and kin. So, you know, he was so much, you know, grieved at this, that as if now their, their term is going to come to an end very soon, and the chastisement and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to start. So that was the basis of his grief. Now I have referred to the first ayah of this surah in the last hour, and that is Kitabun Uhkimat Ayatuhu Summan Fussilat Milladun Hakim in Khabir. This is a book, Quran, a very peculiar book. Its ayat were first made profound and strengthened, and then detailed and explained from him who is Al Hakim and Khabir who is all wise and who is aware of everything. You know, it has two meanings. Number one, in the beginning, the ayat and surah, and the surah which were revealed were very small. Ayat were also very small. Balas, in the insan and afi khusr, illa ladhin amal wa amal salihat wa tawasa bil haqq wa tawasa bil sab. But most profound, most profound, because there is a saying, you know, of Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, had people pondered over this surah only, it would, have, it would have sufficed for them for all guidance that they need. There is another saying of his, quoted by Mufti Muhammad Abduhu in his tafsir. If nothing was revealed from the Quran except this surah al asr, it would have been sufficient to guide the people. So, you know, the, the beginning surahs and ayat, they were small but very profound, saturated, so to say, with hikmah. And hikmah, half, ha, kaf, meem has two meanings, wisdom and, you know, fortified, muhkam. Muhkam is something which is fortified, which is strong enough to defend itself against any invasion. That is mustahkam, which has now gained the strength. So, these ayat in the beginning and the surahs, they were full of wisdom, very strong, very profound. But then they were detailed. Later on we are having very lengthy discourses, you know. Just like, you know, the, the rivulets in the mountainous region. They are narrow, but very deep. But when, you know, in the plain, their you know, breadth increases, but depth this decreases. So that is the case with the ayat which were revealed in the early days and the ayat which were revealed in the later days. Now we had, for example, ayat in Kursi. One ayah having more than ten sentences in it. And that one ayah. Ayat al-Birr. Ayat al-Birr. Ayat al-Birr. al mashriq wal maghrib How much detailed one ayah. So we have long ayahs in the Madani surahs and the later Makki surahs. But in the beginning, small ayat. But they were most profound. Now you can see now this Surah Uhud must have been revealed before Surah Yunus. There is an intrinsic, intrinsic, you know, proof for that, and that will come very soon, we shall read it. But this point can be referred here. It contains 123 ayat. But the rukus are 10. And uh, compare it with Yunus, it had 109 ayat, but rukus were 11. So size of the ayat in Surah Yunus is larger, bigger than the size of ayat, every size of ayat in Surah, Surah Hud. So Surah Hud was earlier revealed and there is another internal evidence for that that will come very soon, inshallah. Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Wahkimat Ayatuhu Summa Fussilat Bin Ladun Hakim in Khabir. Allah Ta'abudu Illallah. The message had been the same of all the books, all the prophets, all the messengers. In one sentence, don't worship anyone except Allah. That's all. We found in the third section of Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum wal-lazhi la min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. This is the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or for that matter, of the message of Quran. And this has been the essence of the message of all the prophets and messengers of Allah. But must keep before you the, the full meanings of ibadah. Worship, loving, obeying, serving. 
four things when joined together, then it becomes ibadah. Allah ta'abudu illa Allah innani lakum minhu nazirun wa bashir. Verily, I am for you from him a nazir, a warmer, and a bashir, and a bearer of glad tidings. Wa aristaghfiru rabbakum, wa aristaghfiru rabbakum, summa tubu ilayh. And you ask a forgiveness of, forgiveness of your Lord and turn towards Him, repent towards Him, relent towards Him. You must take a matan hasan al ilajal al musamma. He will provide you with good things, good provisions of this life. Ilajal al musamma. But till a, a fixed period, every person has a fixed time which he has to pass here. Every nation has a fixed, you know, period granted to it. وَيُوتِ كُلِّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهُ And he gives to all who deserves his bounty. He gives his bounty to those only who deserve his bounty. Or whosoever has any bounty, actually it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُوتِ كُلِّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهُ وَإِن تَوَلَّهُ فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ And if you turn your faces away, then I fear about you. The chastisement of a mighty day, of a big day. إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ To Allah is your return. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٍ And He is, He has power over everything. أَلَىٰ إِنَّهُمْ يَسْلُونَ صُدُورَهُمْ Behold, they are bending or twisting their chests. لِيَسْتَقْفُوا مِنْ So that they can hide themselves from Him. أَلَىٰ هِنَا يَسْتَقْشُونَ سِيَابَهُ Behold, when they are wearing their, their clothes, clothing upon them, even then he knows what they are hiding and what they are making appear. He knows even those things which are in the, in the hearts or chests of the people. About this ayah, you know, there are many ways in which it has been interpreted. But because we find a hadith, you know, and it is included in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, narrated by Ibn Abbas of Allah Ta'ala and Huba. And that we should accept as the true exegesis of the Sahih. And that is, among some of the Sahaba, some of the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were some who were overwhelmingly shy, just as Hazrat Rasman of Allah Ta'ala, shyness, you know, was, you know, overwhelming them. So even when they were, you know, answering the call of nature and so on, other things, and they had to be naked, they were very much ashamed of being naked. And they you used to bend their their chests and twist so that they can hide themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is seeing us. How can we be naked? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allaying there, you know, this fear of theirs. Allah in the yasnuna sudura hum li They want to hide from Allah. But even when you have your clothes are you have put on, Allah knows you and see you through and through. Allah knows what you are hiding. You cannot hide and conceal anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, heena yastakshawna sayyabahu, when they wrap their clothings over them, garments over them, yalabu ma yusirun wa ma yulinun, even at that time, he knows what they conceal and what they reveal. Innahu alimum bizaat is sudur, verily, he knows even those things which are hidden in the hearts. Wa ma min dabbatin fi lagni illa ala Allah irispaha. And there is no take creature, no creature on the whole of the earth. But upon Allah rests his sustenance. This is very important for those who want to serve the deen of Allah. They shouldn't fear where from they will eat. How will they be able to support themselves and their family? The risk, you know, and the providence and provisions and sustenance of this life that is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّتٍ فِي اللَّرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Allah takes the responsibility upon Him. Don't fear. Only you have to put your trust in Him. That is the test. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَهَا Allah knows His place of abode as well as the place of repository. We had these words in Surah Al-An'am perhaps, or Araf, An'am I think. And there I discussed. There are three views about it. Mustaqar is permanent abode. So mostly people think Mustaqar is Akhirah because that is going to be the permanent abode. Mustada is somewhere you keep something for some time. So this worldly life is Mustada. 
but there is another view, although it's not held by so many, that you know, mustaqar for us is dunya for this time and presently. But mustada was the wombs of the mothers. We remained there for nine months. Wa yala mu mustaqar raha wa mustada akulun fi kitabim mubin, and everything is recorded in a book which is manifest and very clear. وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ And it is He who created the heaven and the earth in six days. وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَارِ And His throne was over water. Now this ayah has also intrigued, you know, so many mufassirin. What does it mean? عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَارِ His throne was over water. Well, I dare to venture an opinion, and that is, as you know today, that before life appeared on this planet, for very long period, you know, rains were falling for thousands of years altogether and continuously. Because when this earth, you know, became cold, it shrunk. When it shrunk, there were mountains, there were, you know, uh, up and downs, you know, there were low regions and high regions. Then, you know, when rain came, now there were the oceans. So at that time, it was all ocean, all water. So actually, this this world, for this world, you know, the the uh, government of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so to say, that of this universal government, it was on water. But I can't say that this is actually what is meant by these words here. But uh, this is what, you know, has come to my mind. Then, you know, life began, and then, you know, humans and mankind were created. And what for created? So that he may try you and test you, which one of you is better in his deeds. This is the same ayah as we find in Surah Al-Mulk, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لَيَبْلُوَكُمَ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He created life and death, and so that this worldly life becomes for you a period of testing. In the same way, لَيَبْلُوَكُمَ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He has created you here in this world, this worldly life is, meant to be a period of testing. قُلْ ذُمِ حَسْتِ سَتُ عُبْرَاهِ مَانِ اِنْدِ حَبَاب اِس زِيَانْ خَانِ مِنْ تِيرَا اِمْتِحَانْ ہے زِنْدَگِ This life is actually a period of testing and trial. وَلَا اِنْ قُلْتَ اِنَّكُمْ عَبْرُوسُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْمَوْتِ And if you say, you will be resurrected and raised after your death, لَيَقُولَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سَعْرُ مُبِينَ and if we postpone and delay for them the chastisement for a time which is already fixed, maduda, it is already fixed. They will surely say, what has, what is preventing it to come? They were making haste. Why don't you bring that, that chastisement? We have been hearing, you know, from you for ten long years that azab will come and chastisement and torment will come. But what is holding it back? Ma yahabisu. Ala yawma tayatihim la sabatrufa anhum. Behold, when it will come to them, it will not be able to be turned away from them. Wahaqa bihim ma kaanu bihi astahfi'oon. And they will be encircled by that on which they were mocking and about which they were joking. وَلَيْنَ رَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنَّا رَحْمَةً سُمَّ نَدَعْنَاهَا مِنْ إِنَّهُ لَيَوْسٌ كَفُورٌ Now these two conditions, extreme conditions for man, for common men, usually is the case with men. And if we make a man taste from our mercy, we have given him wealth and health and everything, so our mercy is there, he is tasting life and all the good things of life. سُمَّ نَدَعْنَاهَا مِنْ And then we withdraw these things from him. إِنَّهُ لَيَوْسٌ كَفُورٌ He becomes absolutely disappointed, despaired, and ungrateful. He says, never, I saw never any good thing in life. Oh, Allah has never given me anything. He became so ungrateful. وَإِلَيْنَ لَقْنَاهُ نَعْمَا عَبَالَ دَرَّا وَسَّتْهُ And if we give him the taste of our mercy and our, you know, blessings, after, you know, some hurting had come to him, something which was unpleasant to him to, لَيَقُولَنَّا غَابَ السَّيِّعَاتُ عَنِّي And then he will say, definitely say, well, all evils have gone from me. إِنَّهُ لَفَرِهُنْ فَخُورٌ Then he becomes overjoyed, farah. 
I told you this word is used in the Quran not in a good sense. Farah, overjoyed. And Fakhur, boastful. You know, because everything which is coming to us in this world is for testing. If something unpleasant, it is also for testing, whether we, we, are, we persevere or not. We, have, we show patience, patience or not. If something good has come, whether we are grateful or not, we become overjoyed, you know, and that also shows, you know, the, the shallowness of our personality. So actually, we should have something in between in all the cases. But this is not the case of those who have patience. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا عَمِلُ الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who have patience and perseverance and they could do good deeds. أُولَائِكَ لَهُمْ مَثْرَةٌ وَعَجِرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them, there will be the forgiving, pardoning and a very great reward. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَعْرِكُمْ بَعْضَ مَنْ يُوْحَا إِلَيْكَ وَذَعَيْكُمْ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ يَقُولُ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ كَنْزٌ أَوْ جَا مَعَهُ مَلَكٌ So perhaps or perchance you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are going to leave some of what has been sent down to you, revealed to you. وَذَعَيْكُمْ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ And your chest is shrinking on it. أَنْ يَقُولُ That they are saying, لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ كَنْزُمْ Why has not been a treasure sent down on him? He says, I am the representative of Allah, the master of all the worlds. Wouldn't he give him a treasure? Wealth? We saw him all the life toiling in his childhood. Even his, you know, early adolescence, he was working as a laborer. Then he was working as a merchant. And he claims to be the representative of Allah, the ambassador of Allah on earth. So how come? Wouldn't Allah give him the wealth and riches? Oh, Jai Mahu Malak. And if he is really a messenger of Allah, so angels could have been accompanying him, you know, shouting to people, Oh, this is messenger of Allah, you must believe in him. Wallahu ala kulli shayin makil, and Allah is a guardian over everything. Now because these things were coming to him repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly, people were saying these things, you know. And you know, years had passed after years. So maybe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also felt somewhat, you know, grieved at it. And we find it. إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يَذِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ But they are saying, you know, your chest shrinks over it due to grief and sorrow. So, perhaps, but I don't think, you know, this is directed towards those people who are pressurizing him. You are pressurizing him so that he should give up some of the, those things which have been revealed to him. But, you know, apparently, it is directed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but actually it is meant for those who are pressurizing him. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَعْرِكُمْ بَعْضَ مَا يُحَا إِلَيْكَ وَذَعَيْكُمْ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ أَنْ يَقُولُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ كَنْزُنَ وَجَعَ مَعَهُ مَلَكِ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ نَذِيرٌ Oh Muhammad, you are nothing but a warner. وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلًا It's Allah who is the guardian over everything. Am yaqulun aftarah? Are they saying that he has composed it? He has forged it? He has, you know, concocted all this? Qul fatu bi ashre sobarim mislehi. This is the intrinsic proof and evidence that this surah was revealed before surah Yunus. Because, you know, this argument, you know, it started from the whole of Quran. We find in surah Bani Israel. قُلْ لَيْلِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ يَاتُ وَمِسْلِ هَادُ الْقُرَانِ لَا يَاتُونَ بِمِسْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ذَهِيرًا Tell them if all humans, all jinns could join together to compose a book like this Quran, they will not be able to compose it. Although they might help each other. So here a full book that was asked. That if you can do, you also compose a full book. But then, Barsabile tanazzul, it is called, you know. If you couldn't do that, okay. Then you compose ten surahs, okay. Not this whole of book. Ten surahs. And when they couldn't meet this challenge, okay. Now you come, come forth with one surah. So it's gradual. Whole of Quran, surah Bani Israel. Here, ten surahs. Ten surahs. Fatu bi ashre sovarim mislehi. You, you also bring forth ten surahs like this. Muftarayatin, which, which, which may be composed by men and forged by humans. Vadu manistatatum midunillah. 
and you call whomsoever you can except Allah in kuntum sadiqin if you are true fa lam yastajibu lakum but then if they don't if they don't you know accept your challenge if they don't reply to your request fa'lamu anna ma unzila bi ilmi Allah now you must know that it has been sent down with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ilaha illahu and there's no god except he fal antum muslimun so now are you ready to submit when you couldn't meet the challenge when you couldn't and your your false boss didn't reply you they couldn't help you you could call to them okay send us some you know some jinn who can compose you know surahs like quran your false gods have failed you you are unable to accept the challenge so you must be ready now to to submit and surrender falan to muslimun man kana yuridu hayata ad-dunya wa zinataha nuwaffi ilayhim a'malahum fiha wa hum fiha la yukhasun who so ever intends to have the enjoyment of this life of this world and its adornment nuwaffi ilayhim a'malahum we pay them in full for their deeds wa hum fiha la yubkhasun and they shall not be made to suffer anything no diminution would be done if somebody has chosen this world is working hard they are not okay we shall give you give him the wealth of this life the comforts of this life while after all is working hard day and night he is sweating you know any like anything so he must be given something from this world no fee and we give them full pay them in full ilahim amalahum all their deeds fiha in this world wa hum fiha la yukhasun and nothing they will be deprived of nothing of their labor ulaik allazina laysa lahum fil akhirah illa an-nar but for them they are the, they are those for them there will be nothing in the hereafter except fire wa habita ma sanau and whatsoever they had produced in this world will go in vain because they never intended to have anything in akhirah even if they were doing some good deeds they wanted you know that people should you know praise them that they are very philanthropic type of person they are very good persons so actually if even they were doing apparently good deeds they didn't want the, the recompense or the reward of akhirah they wanted all the reward in this world and we have given it so now in the akhirah they don't have anything to get except nar ulaika alladhina laysa lahum fil akhirati illa an-nar wa habita ma sanau fiha wa batilu ma kanu ya'malu whatever good deeds they were doing they was also false and hollow without any basis now comes a very important ayah of this surah and this is going to be the key word and key theme of this surah afa man kana ala bayyinatin mir rabbih wa yatluhu shahidun minhu so the person who was already on a self evident truth from his lord and then follows him a witness from him what does it mean as i told you human nature it contains all the iman and all the facts in potential potentially it has it is there love of god is there the the soul which was breathed into us faiza sawaytu wa nafaktu fi bi ruhi this ruh is the from allah subhanahu wa taala so it has all the things just like you know a seed contains the whole of plant where from does the plant come from that seed potentially the whole plant the whole tree is present in that nut or seed in the same way in human nature there is bayyana if the nature is not perverted if it is a healthy nature pure nature pure human nature it is bayyana within you now when the revelation comes it is a witness it testifies that whatever you have in your heart is correct دیکھنا تقریر کی لذت کے جو اس نے کہا میں نے یہ جانا کہ گویا یہی میرے دل میں ہے اینڈ دس از واٹ حافظ ابن قیم رحمہ اللہ سیڈ ان ون آف ہز آرٹیکلس دیر آر سم پیپل 
who will read Quran. They feel that they are not reading Quran from the Mushaf, from this book. They feel this Quran is written on their hearts, and they are reading, reading it from there. Because there is complete harmony between the human nature and what Quran is saying. So actually this Quran testifies that whatever human nature is saying is correct. You may say that human nature and soul testifies that whatever Quran is saying is correct. So this is a mutual testimony, mutual harmony between the two. So if there was a person who had a pure nature, now just imagine Abu Bakr Rabbi Allah Ta'ala, pure of nature, tender hearted, a muttaqi person, God fearing person, and you know he was very kind to people, and he was of this sound intellect. He never worshipped any idols. Even before when he started coming to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a muwahid from the very beginning. So he is the person, he was the person. In the same way, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such a person. But I am not mentioning Muhammad because he was a, a prophet. And prophet is by birth a prophet. So I am mentioning Hazrat Abu Bakr or Hazrat Osman ibn Maz'oon. There was another person who died before the revelation started coming to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was Zaid. His son, you know, Sayyid ibn Zaid is one of the ten up topmost sahaba, Ashra'i Mubashara, Sayyid ibn Zaid, who was the brother-in-law of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Imam came to Sayyid ibn Zaid and his wife Fatima bint Khattab before it came to Umar ibn Khattab. Rather, it came to Umar ibn Khattab through them. And actually, why? Because Sayyid was son of Zaid. And Zaid was also one of such persons, a very kind-hearted, very pure-natured person, who used to say, holding, you know, the curtains of Kaaba, Oh Allah, I want to worship you and you alone, but I don't know how to worship you. Now, had the revelation to Muhammad started in his lifetime, he would have been the Siddiq, one of the Siddiqs. So this is the nature, human nature, the testimony. Quran testifies to the human nature. Now when revelation is coming, it is actually witness that whatever you have in your, the self-evident truth that you have in your souls, actually it is correct. And that is how we can understand when revelation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did he recognize it is revelation? How did he recognize that this is an angel? Not an evil spirit. He could have any thought, doubt. Maybe he's a he's Satan. Maybe he's some jinn. He has come to, you know, lead me astray. But no. His nature recognized. So in, no man is not blind by nature. He has that, you know, the sight also. And you know the the intellect also, the soul of man. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةِ مِنْ رَبِّي وَيَطْلُوهُ شَاهِدٌ مِنْهُ وَمِنْ قَبْلِهِ كِتَابُ مُوسَىٰ And this Qur'an has come as a witness now. And before this Qur'an, there was the book of Moses, Imam of Rahmah. This was also guidance and mercy. أُولَائِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Such people will come to believe in this book because they are pure of nature. They will have no difficulty in recognizing the truth of this book and the truthfulness of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِهِ مِنَ الْأَحْزَابِ And whosoever rejects it from among all the groups and factions, because there were the idolaters, there were the Jews and Christians, مِنَ الْأَحْزَابِ فَنَّارُ مَعِدُهُ So fire is the place of their promise. فَلَا تَكُوا فِي بَرِيَةٍ مِنْهُ and you should not be in any doubt about that. In the Hulhaqqu bin Rabbika. And this is the truth from your Lord. But you know, most of the people are not going to believe. And who is more evil doer than the person who concocts or forges something and then attributes it to Allah? This is the biggest crime. This is the biggest lie. If I am not a prophet and I say I am a prophet, this is the biggest lie. You are lying on Allah. And some people is lying something about humans, about men. But he is, you know, attributing that thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a false thing. So this is the biggest lie. 
وہ لائے کا یو رضون اعلی رب ہی دے ول بی پریزنٹڈ بفور دیئر لارڈ ہو سو ایور ڈز دس کرائم وہ یقول الرشاد ہاؤ اللہ جن قدب والا رب ہی اینڈ دین دی وٹنسز ول سے دیز آر دی پیپل ہو فورس دس اینڈ دے ایٹریبیوٹڈ اٹ ٹو دیئر لارڈ اللہ لانت اللہ علیہ الظالمین اینڈ بیہولڈ دی کرس اف اللہ ول بی آن سچ ایول ڈوئرز نا واٹ از دی ایسنس اف دس آیا do you or can you imagine for even a single moment that muhammad can do it sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have known him he has lived with you for 40 years and if it is being revealed in the 10th year after the beginning of wahi for 50 years you know him did he ever tell a lie if he didn't tell a lie in the matters of this world small disputes if he didn't attribute any false thing to any human how could you expect that he would attribute something false to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the biggest crime wa man azlamu mimman iftara ala allah kadhiban ulaika yuraduna ala rabbihim wa yaqulu ashhadu ha ula alladhina kadhabu ala rabbihim ala laanatu allah ala zalimin alladhina yasudduna an sabilillah those all i mean those over the evil doers who are obstructing people who are holding back themselves from the path of allah and obstructing others preventing others from going towards the path of allah i told you sadda ya suddo and both the meanings hold back yourself and you prevent others by abun hai wa ja they want to find in it crookedness wa hum bil akhirati hum kafirun and the real cause is that they don't believe in the hereafter that is actually the root cause of all their their ills ulai kalam yakunu mujizina fil lard these people are not going to be able to frustrate allah subhanahu wa taala defeat him in the land or the earth wama kana lahum min dunillahi min awliya and there will not be for them besides allah any protectors yuzafu lahum al azab the testament will be doubled for them ma kanu yastatiyun as-sam'a wa ma kanu yubsirun they were not able to hear and they were not seeing because the real human being within them had died their souls had died now they were like you know just moving graves nothing of that sort moving mausoleums ulaika alladhina khasiru anfusahum wa dalla anhum ma kanu yaftarun they are the people who have ruined themselves who have put themselves in the loss wadalla anhum ma kanu yaftarun and whatever they are concocting and whatever they are forging that these are going to help us and they will be our intercessor they will all disappear and vanish la jama there's no doubt annahum fil akhirati humul aksarun that in the hereafter they will be the greatest in losing the biggest losers the greatest losers will be them inna alladhina amanu wa amilus salihati wa akhbatu ila rabbihim as for those who believe and do good deeds and they are humble to their lords humble before their rabb ulaika ashabul jannah they are the people of garden hum fiha khalidun and they will dwell in it forever مثلا الفريقين كالعمى والاصم والبصير والسمير now these two groups the similitude of these two groups is like the similitude of those who are blind and deaf and on the other hand there are people who are seeing and hearing those who believe they are the people who are seeing and hearing those are those who are rejecting and denying and belying this truth they are like the deaf and the dumb blind and deaf hal yastawiyan masala are they equal are they similar in this similitude afala tazakkarun so don't you get reminded and admonished now comes you know the story of nuh and i told you two sections of this surah 25 ayat are devoted to the story of hazrat nuh alaihi salatu wassalam although you know it has been repeated many a time but this is the longest discourse we have another surah complete surah in the 28th part surah an-nu it also has 28 ayat it is absolutely and exclusively devoted to the history of nu alayhi salatu wassalam 
but the you know counterpart you can say is this place in the quran where you know this has been discussed in detail wala qad arsalna nuhan ila qaumihi inni lakum nadhirum mubin and we have sent nuh to his nation now not nation whole of the nation nation as a whole inni lakum nadhirum mubin and he said we i am for you a clear warner allah ta'budu illa allah and you know the message is that you don't worship anything anyone except allah inni akhaf alaykum azaba yawmin alim i fear on you the chastisement of a very big day very mighty day faqal al malaw alladhina kafaru min qaumi so replied the chiefs of his nation who had who had disbelieved him ma naraka illa bashram mislana we don't see you except you are also a human being you are also mortal like us wama naraka tabaka illa alladhina hum aladuluna badiyan rahi and we don't see that anybody had followed you except those who are meanest apparently most apparently the meanest of our our slaves our servants some of those have gathered around you now none of the noble the nobility none of the aristocracy none of the wealthy people nobody has you know accepted your your dawa and accepted you as the messenger of allah except you know some people you know who belong to the lowest status of our society wama naraka illa tabaka illa ladina illa ladina walad luna badi ra most apparently they you we can see that they belong to the lowest strata of our society wama nara lakum alaina min fazl and we don't see that there is any superiority superiority in you or them over us if is what the truth which you are presenting then allah subhanahu wa taala should have made you superior to us in wealth also in position also in you know in this hierarchy of the tribe also but we don't find you are not from among the chiefs you are not from among the wealthiest people of the tribe and in the same way only these people you know the poor the people are gathering around you bal nazul lakum kazibin oh we think that you are telling a lie you are in an impostor qala ya qaum ari araitum in kuntu awala bayyanatan mir rabbi now this is the same thing i told you this is going to be the the central idea he said oh my nation oh my people have you considered if i was on bayyana from my rabb you know you have been seeing me the nature that i had that i was bestowed upon by allah subhanahu wa taala my character you have been seeing me all along if in kuntu ala bayyanatan min if i was on a self evident light from my rod wa atani rahmatan min indihi and then he gave me the mercy from his treasures that is why this has come to me later for 40 years there was no wahi to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was on the bayyana from his lord right from his birth his character his personality you know was a shining light but you know wahi was not coming but then wahi came light added unto light nurun ala nur just as we have in surah an nur nurun ala nur the nature was a nur itself and then the wahi nur of wahi has also come so nur has been added to nur qala ya qaum araitum in kuntu ala bayyanati min rabbi wa atani rahmatan min indihi fa ummiyat alaykum and this has been obscured from you you are not able to see it anul zamu kumuha wa antum laha karihun so can we compel you to accept it if you are not liking it if you are abhorring it we cannot uh, compel you to accept it wa ya qaum la asalukum alayhi mala and my people just look and think i have never asked you for any money i have never asked you for any wealth i don't ask you for any ajr in ajri illa allah my reward my salary my remuneration everything rest with allah subhanahu wa taala wa ma ana bi taridil ladina amanu and i am not going to drive away those who have come to believe whether they are from your servants whether they are from your slaves whether do you feel that they are the mean people they are the menials and so on whatever you may like to say ma ana bi taridil ladina amanu i am not going to drive them away innahum ulaqu rabbihim they will be meeting their lord 
ولاکن نہیں اراکم قومن تجہلون بٹ آئی ڈو سی دیٹ یو آر ان اگنورنس یو آر ناٹ سینگ دی ٹروتھ یو آر اگنورنٹ بھیا قوم میں میں جنسر ہوں نہیں مل اللہ اینڈ مائی پیپل جسٹ تھنگ ہو ول بی ہو ول سیو می ہو بی ایبل ٹو سیو می ہو ول بی ایبل ٹو ہیلپ می اگینسٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ان طرف تو ہوں اف آئی ڈرائیو دم اوے بیکاز دے آر پور آئی ڈرائیو دم اوے آئی پوش دم اوے فرام می حیا قوم میں میں انصر ہوں نہیں من اللہ ان طرف تو ہوں افلا تھا کروں ڈو یو ناٹ گیٹ ریمائنڈیڈ ایڈمانیشن ولا اقول لکم اندی خزائن دی سیم ورڈنگ وچ اپیئرڈ ریگارڈنگ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ولا اقول لکم اندی خزائن لا ائی ہیو نیور کلیمڈ ائی ڈونٹ کلیم دیٹ ائی پوزیس دی ٹریجرز اف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ولا اعلم الغیب اینڈ ائی کلیئر دی سٹیٹ دیٹ ائی ڈونٹ نو دی ان سین ولا اقول اندی ملک نور ڈو ائی سی دیٹ ائی ایم ان انجل I have never claimed to be an angel. وَلَا قُولُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَدْرِ عَيُنُكُمْ لَنْ يُوتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا Nor I can say that the people, your eyes are looking down upon them, these people, you are hating them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give them the goods, the goods of hereafter, you know. فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً You are seeing them to be mean or low, but maybe they are high in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, I can't say. Allah alamu bima anfu sayin. Allah very well knows. He is aware of what is there in, in, there in their souls. Inni is Allah min al-zalimin. If I drive them away, well, I would become one of the evil doers. Qalu ya nuhu qad jadal tana fa aksar ta jidalana. They said, oh nuh. You have disputed with us. You have argued with us. And you have gained a lot in this dispute. You have made a lot of dispute. It can be translated in both ways. You have made a lot of dispute and argument. Now we are fed up with this argument. Now if you are true, now bring to us what you are threatening us. Bring the azab of Allah. Call on Allah. He should send the azab on us. The chastisement or the torment about which we have been talking so long. Now let it be. Let it happen. Qala innama yatikum bihi Allah insha. He replied, Allah will bring it to you or you if he so desires. Waman tu me mojizin. And when it comes, You will not be able to defeat. You will not be able to protect yourself from the chastisement. You will not be able to escape it. وَلَا يَنْفَعُكُمْ نُسْحِينَ أَرَدْتُ وَلَنْ سَحَلَكُمْ And I know that my sincere counseling and advice will be of no avail to you even if I sincerely want for you that you be saved. وَلَا يَنْفَعُكُمْ نُسْحِينَ أَرَدْتُ وَلَنْ سَحَلَكُمْ إِنْ كَانَ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ وَنْ يُغْوِيَكُمْ If Allah has decided That too, he has to lead you astray. He has put a seal on your faith. He has put set the seals on your heart, and I can't do it. Who are a bookum? He is your Lord. By the way, turn down, and to him you will be returned. Am yakunun of tarah? Are they saying that he has concocted these things? Now here he means Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the midst of this discourse, discussing the events of Hazrat Nuh. And what was going on between him and his people? Now, in, bit, in the, between them, there is a reference to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Am yakoonul of tara? Now, these things which we are revealing to you, O Muhammad, do they say that you have forged them? Only the tarae tohu fale ya irami. Say to them, if I have concocted these things, forged these things, these ayat fale ya irami, so on me will be my guilt. My crime will be on me. بَعْنَا بَرِيُمْ مِمَّا تُجْرِمُونَ But likewise, I am absolutely unanswerable for your guilt, what you are doing. If what I am saying is correct, it is from Allah and you are rejecting. Well, you will be repaid, you will be rewarded, you will be recompensed. If, for the sake of argument, if I am doing this thing wrong, then I will have to face the consequences. وَأُوْحِيَا إِلَىٰ نُوْحِمْ And it was revealed to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam annahu lan yumina min qawmika illa man qad ahman. That now nobody else is going to come to believe from your people except those who have already believed. A full stop has been put now. 
انه لن يؤمن من قومك الا من قد امن فلا تبتئس بما كانوا يفعلون سو dont be in distress now don't be disappointed don't be in agony on what they have been doing wasna al fulk bi ayuna na wa wahyna and now construct the ark according to bi ayuna before our eyes we will be watching we will be giving instructions wa wahyna and our wahi will be coming how long how broad how much you know deep what what how to build it continuous instructions coming wasna al fulk bi ayuna in our eyes we are seeing we are watching wa wahyna and our instructions coming to you through the revelations wala tu khatibni fil ladina zalamu now don't address me never address me regarding these people who have transgressed who have rejected in the hum ghraqun all of them are going to be drowned now it shouldn't happen that you know your brotherly feelings for your people they are aroused in your heart and then you say oh allah pardon them now no if this has happened it has been decreed now don't address me regarding these people although they might be your kith and kin your relatives maybe your own son maybe your own wife but now you cannot address me and you can not call upon me to have any mercy on them by asnaul fulk and he was constructing the ark kullama marra alayhi malaw min qaumihi sakhiru min whenever the chief from his nation from his people passed by him they joked scoffed at him so what is he doing now you know he has gone mad absolutely mad we we doubted from the very beginning that he is crazy now he is absolutely mad on in this region far away from any ocean far away from any sea far away from any big river and he is constructing such a big ark such a big boat where will it where will he float it now no doubt that he has gone crazy ويسنعوا الفول وكلما مر عليه ملاو من قومه سخروا منه قال ان تسخروا منا فاننا نسخر منكم he replied now see the bitterness in, in the words of lu if you are joking on us and scoffing of us scoffing on us today a time will come we will be scoffing on you كما تسخرون as you are scoffing on us فسوف تعلمون من ياتيه عذاب يخزي and very soon you will know to whom comes the torment and the chastisement which will humiliate him wa yahillu alayhi azabu muqim and a lasting chastisement and torment will come upon them hatta idha jamruna wa farat tanur just it was it happened kept on happening until our command came hatta jamruna wa farat tanur and the oven boiled out First of all, a big tanur, a big oven, you know, a very gush, gushing water came, started coming from that. And in other places, we know that a very strong rain started coming from the skies, and there were from everywhere, you know, the the earth was, uh, you know, there were fissures which appeared in the earth, and from that water was gushing out. And let me tell you, A. G. Wells has given an explanation, a physical explanation. He has written it in his, but I don't now fully remember. He has written two books on the world history: a short history of the world and a concise history of the world. In which of them I can't, I'm not sure, but in one of them he has written that this, you know, big flood came because the level of this area at that time, this region, was lower than the level of the ocean, and along the coast of the Mediterranean there was a high ridge. and they say it is the case in karachi also some areas of karachi are lower than the level of the ocean level of the sea but because along the coast there is a ridge stony ridge so that protects karachi maybe at some time you know there is some some you know crack in that ridge and water then gushes if the sea level is higher then then that ground you know it will come like anything and it can be from one spot You know, a big, you know, just as Karbala Dam, for example, how far? God forbid. Even if there, if there is a crack at one place, what will happen? It will bring havoc. 
So his, you know, explanation is that the level of this land was lower at that time than the surface of the Mediterranean Sea. And along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, there was a big mountainous ridge which was holding the ocean. Then there was some, you know, leaking and that place far at the Noor, as Quran said, maybe it's just possible, it's just an explanation. And then, you know, the, the ocean, whole the water of ocean, you know, gushed into this area. And there was a flood over a very vast area. And it appears from the Quran that the progeny of Adam, alayhi salatu was was limited to this region till that time. So that when, you know, this, the, they were drowned, so actually the whole progeny of Adam, alayhi salam, was finished, except the people who were among Hazrat, who were with Hazrat Inu, alayhi salam, in his ark. Wallahu alam. Wa farat tanur kul nahmil fiha min kulli zawjain, min kulli zawjain islain. And we said, embark in it a pair from every kind. Wa ahlaka, and your own family. Illa man sabaqa alayhi al-qawl. Except from your family, on whom the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already gone. Waman aman, and all those who have come to believe with you. So a pair from all kinds of animals and birds and beasts and so on. Min kull is all there is there. Number two, your own family, except from your own family even, about whom the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already come. And as we know, it was number one, one of his wives, and number two, one of his sons. They were from his family. Because we find it in Surah Al-Tahreen, mention of wife of Hazrat Inu and wife of Hazrat Ilut that they were, you know, unbelievers, they were with the kuffar, and they were you know, punished along with those who were punished. And you will find here the story of one of his sons. And people didn't believe in him except only a very few. They say they were 72. I find, I, I feel not even 72. Only three of his sons, their wives, maybe one or two wives of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam himself, and a few servants. And after him, you know, the, the progeny of humans started only from the three sons of Hazrat Nuh. Hazrat Ham, Hazrat Sam, Hazrat Yafis. وَقَالَرْ كَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِهَا وَبُرْسَاهَا And he said, now embark in it. With Allah's name shall be its running, its floating, and its mooring. In the Rabbi la Ghafur Rahim, verily my Lord, my Rabb, is forgiving and merciful. وَهِيَ تَدْرِي بِهِمْ فِي مَوْجٍ كَالْجِبَالِ And it was moving with them. Amid waves like mountains. Vanada Nuhunibnahu, Nuhunibnahu, Nuhunibnahu. And Nuh called out to his son. Vakana fi madilin. And he was standing aloof. He was not, he had not mounted, not embarked that ship, that, that ark. He was standing aloof. Yabuna Yarkamana. Oh my son. Oh my dear son. You also embark with us. Don't be with those who are disbelievers. He said, no, no harm. Very soon I will reach that mountain. I will, you know, climb that mountain. It will save me, protect me from the water. He said, no protection today. None to protect, except min amrillah, from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No protection, no protector. Illa wa rahim. Except whom he shows mercy. Only his mercy can, can rescue you, nothing else. Wa hala bainahum al mawj. And a wave intervened between them. Fakana min al mughraqeen. And he became one of those who were drowned. وَقِيلَ يَعْرْضُ اللَّهِ مَا كِي And it was said, O earth, you swallow back your water. وَيَا سَمَا وَقْلِعِي And O sky, O heaven, with all your water. 
وغيظ الماء and water subsided وقضي الأمر and the whole matter was settled and decided واستمت على الجودي and the ark stayed came to a rest on judi this judi is a peak among the ararat range of mountains and this is an area which is absolutely in between near adjoining the where these three countries are meeting turkey russia armenia and this is a very difficult place to go you know to reach the top so whenever you know muslims have some authority and they can do it and they have the means they should send this expedition because quran says in many places allah subhanahu wa taala has kept it and it will appear and people will know that this is the ark of no alayhi salatu was salam waqil baad modal lil qaum az zalimin it was said and proclaimed done away with the evil doing people they have been finished مَوْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِ وَنَادَى نُوحُ رَبَّهُ And now Nuh called out to his Lord فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنَّ أَبْنِي مِنْ أَهْلِي And he said, O oh my Lord, my son was from amongst my family. مِنَّ وَعَدَكَ الْحَقِّ And your promise is true. You promised you will save my family. وَأَنْ تَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِ And you are the best judge of all the judges. Now the way it's a complaint, but the way how this complaint is being presented to the Lord. Another one, O Rabbi, who called out, "Rabbi, in the name of Nahli, by the word of the Hak, one to Hakim the Hakim." He couldn't say, "My my son was destroyed and drowned." You had promised me that my family will remain safe. Kala ya nu ho inna hu la sami na halik. This is very important place of Quran. Even you know, a bondsman like Nu, having served Allah for nearly a thousand years, but still he is a bondsman. Al Rabbu Rabbun wa in Tanazal wa Al Abdu Abdun wa in Taraqa. Bondsman remains the bondsman. He might ascend to the seventh heaven as Muhammad ascended, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the night of ascension. And the Lord remains the Lord, although he may come down to the lowest, lowest heaven. The difference of Lord and bondsman remains as such. Just look, thousand years, hardest labor, calling people, bearing all the hardships. people laughing mocking at him but here a slight you know you may say an appeal a request a humble request but it had an you know is a sort of a, what we should say protest wala dalu rabbahu faqad rabbi inna abni min ahli wa nawadak ma nawadak al haq wal tahakum al hakimin in the most careful words but it contains something like a but to say protest qala ya nu ho innahu la yasam min ahlik innahu amalun ghayru salih fala tasallim ala salaka bihi ilm inni a'izuka an takuna min al jahilin look to the harshness of the words the same words appeared for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam surah al-an'am don't be from among jahilin If you can, فإن كان كبر عليك إرادهم فإن استطعت أن تبتغي نفقا في الأرض أو سلما في الأرض في السماء فتعب يوم من آية. If you know the matter has become unbearable for you, if you can, you know if you can dig a tunnel in the land or you can have a ladder into the sky and bring them a, a, a miracle, go and have it. Who is being addressed here? انكان قبرك عليك اراده فان استطعت ان تبتغي نفقا في الارض او سلما في السماء فتات يوم بها حسين قال يا نوح انه ليس من اهلك اي ذا بلايد الله سبحانه وتعالى ريبلايد هي از نوت فروم يور فاميلي انه عمل غير صالح 
He is of unrighteous deeds. فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمِ Don't ask me about which you don't have the knowledge. The Ahle Tashayyo interpret this ayah in a particular sense. And that is that this son of Hazrat Nuh, his name was Yam or Kinaan, two names have been mentioned. Yam and you know on the same meter, Sam, Ham, Yam. But another name mentioned is Kinaan. He was not his son actually. His wife about whom Surah Tahreem is telling. ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَسَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُ مْرَاتَ نُوْهِمْ وَمْرَاتَ لُوْتُ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ فَخَانَتَا هُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَّا وَقِيلَ خُلَ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ خِيَانَةً So they were corrupt. That's the interpretation that they give. So actually, this son of Nuh was a bastard according to their interpretation of this ayah. And the ayah of Surah Al-Tahri. But the Ahl Sunnah don't accept it. They don't accept that, you know, a, an unfaithful wife, you know, corrupt. Corrupt in that sense, you know. Committing adultery cannot be in the house of a Nabi of Allah, a Prophet of Allah. So I only just mentioned it. Innahu amalun ghayru salih, fala tas'alni ma la salaka don't ask me for which you have no knowledge. In the eyes of Kantakura min al Jahilin, I admonish you, lest you should become one of the ignorance. Qala Rabbi inni a'udhu bika an asalaka ma la sali bihi ilm. Immediately, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam replied, O oh my Lord, I take refuge in thee, lest I should ask from you about which I have no knowledge. And if you don't forgive me and you don't show mercy to me, I will become one of the losers. The same words which Hazrat Adam Hamba they uttered. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tasfir lana wa tarhamna la nakunanna min al-khasirin. We read it in Surah Al-Araf. Qila ya nuhu bit wa salamin minna wa barakatin alayk. It was said and proclaimed. Tila. It was said. Some angel might have proclaimed. Ya Nuhu bitmin bi salamin minna. O Nuh, now you get down from this ark. With peace from us. Salamin minna wa barakatin. And blessings from us. Alayka. On you. Wa ala umamin mimma mark. And all the nations and communities who will emerge from those who are with you in the ark. These words are very important. Oma min min man mark. The communities and nations, the progenies of those who are with you in the ark. Wa oma mun sanumakkeohum. And there are going to be nations. Whom we shall give some worldly things, some provisions of the, this world, summa yamasuhum minna azabun alim, and then a very painful torment is going to come to them. Now this refers to Aad. They were also from the progeny of Hazrat Islam alayhi salatu wasalam. Then again to Samud. He was also from the progeny of, from Aad, and so on. And even the Chaldean Empire, you know, that was in, in Iraq. That is also from Sam. So all these, you know, prophets who are mentioned in Quran, they are actually all progeny of Sam, Semitic races. Whether they are, you know, the Jews or they are the Arabs, they were the uh, Chaldeans or all these Phoenicians, etc., etc. All people who lived in in Syria, in Iraq, in the Arabian Peninsula, all these people, and from there actually. At, um, at, you know, different times, people came out and invaded. At the time of Hazrat Yusuf a.s., the king in Egypt was from this very Arabian Peninsula. He was not Firaun. That is why in the Surah, Surah Yusuf, we don't find the word Firaun, Malik, Khal al-Malik. They were actually the Hyksos kings, they call, in the history of Egypt. These, this was not a dynasty of Firaina, but it was 
another dynasty of a people who had come, come from the Arabian Peninsula, invaded Egypt, and they had established their rule over there. So they, this was, a, so to say, a reservoir of human potential. وَأُمَمُمْ سَلْمَتْعُهُمْ سُمَّ يَمَسْتُهُمْ مِنَّ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ تِلْكَ مِنْ نَمْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهَا إِلَيْكَ This is the concluding ayah of this discourse. These are from the news of the unseen, which we are revealing to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. مَا كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُهَا أَنْتَ وَلَا قَوْمُكَ You didn't know them. Neither you yourself nor your nation. People of Ad were known to these Arabs. People of Hud, Ad, because they dwelt in the peninsula, in the southern part of the peninsula, which is the worst type of deserts today. The worst desert in the world. And Samud, this nation was also and uh, inhabiting the Arabian Peninsula, the uh, northern, western, you know, corner of the Arabian Peninsula just near the Gulf of Aqaba. So these people, then you know, along the right of the eastern coast of Aqaba, they were the people who were, to, to whom was sent Hazrat Shuaib Then you know, down the co coast of the Dead Sea, they, they, there were situated the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So there was sent Hazrat Ibn Salaam. So all these nations, they were known to these people. But because the nation of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam lived high up to in the north, in that area which is today called Kurdistan, part of it in, is in Turkey, part of it is in Iraq, part of it is in Iran, and some of it is in Armenia. So this was higher up. So Arab, the Arabs, you know, they didn't know the history of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Tilka min ambail ghaybe nuhiha ilayk. مَا كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُهَا أَنْتَ وَلَا قَوْمُكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا You didn't know them, nor yourself, nor your nation, before this. فَاسْبِرْ So, O Muhammad, have patience, persevere. Because the result will be the same. You will be helped. You will be delivered. You and people who have come to believe with you, we shall help them. Our help shall come to them. In the laqibata lil muttaqeen, and the happy end are for those who fear Allah, who are God conscious, who regard Allah, who believe in Him, who love Him, and who spend everything for His pleasure. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.